Good evening, Bethlehem and saints of God. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, or whatever time you've tuned into. Heads up for the weekend. Heads up for the weekend is where I, my name is Pastor Michael Eton. For those who do not know me, let you know what's going on here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church this weekend. Uh, before we let you know what's going on this weekend, I want to take this time to extend the personal invitation for those who live in Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, and do not have a church home. You may have just moved here, or you may have just gotten saved, and you've been praying and asking God to deliver you or show you the place where you can go worship him in spirit and in truth. And you've been praying for us, and we've been praying for you that God would add the disciples to our church as he sees fits and possibly you're listening at the sound of my voice and this is a personal invitation from myself but also a move from God to get you right here to the Bethlehem Baptist Church we're located at 311 North Dunbar again we're located at 311 North Dunbar and we'd love to see your face in the place we're in COVID protocols so wear your mask and we'll keep our distance but we decided as a church to never be distant from God and never be distant from God's people so once again we implore you and we invite you we encourage you to join us this coming Sunday why don't you bring a family member or a friend and meet us at the Bethlehem Baptist Church 311 North Dunbar and also, before you join us, you can get to know us online at www.heargodsword at Bethlehem.com. Again, it's www.heargodsword at Bethlehem.com, all spelled out. You get to know us there. Once you get to know us, you can also click the Facebook tab, the Instagram tab, the Twitter tab, and join us or follow us or friend us in what I call Cyber Church. We have many folk in our cyber church family, and we'd like for you to be a part of that as well before you join us this Sunday at the 11 a.m. service. Again, you're listening to Heads Up for the Weekend, and Heads Up for the Weekend, uh, we want to announce that tomorrow, tomorrow, we will be in our day of prayer and fasting. We're going to be praying and fasting from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. tomorrow, uh, Friday, February the 18th. And we want you to be a part of this with us, saints of God, as well as we want to encourage the, the saints at Bethlehem to know, never sleep on the power of prayer and fasting. Uh, we're standing on during our time, Second, Corin Second Chronicles uh, chapter 7, verse 14, uh, that excellent verse on how a nation can be healed. And he says the nation can be healed that if his people, he didn't say the, 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 the president, uh, he didn't say the governor, he didn't he didn't say the mayor. He said, if my people now, prayerfully, we do have a, a, a Christian mayor. Uh, I know we have a Christian mayor, but prayerfully, we have a Christian governor, a Christian uh, president who is a part of his people and who can pray. But if not, you don't have to have an influential position to change the world. He said, if my people who call by my name will humble themselves and pray. And turn from their wicked ways. He says he will first forgive us of our sins and then heal our land. And I believe God has the power today to heal our land. I believe he has the power to heal our church. Uh, Bethlehem, you're part of that conference yesterday. We need to fast and pray about some of the things we saw in the conference. And believe. God has the power uh, to be that father that we call on to. He has the power also to be the food that we need for such 
a time as this, Jehovah Jireh. We got to fast and pray that God will deliver us, uh, the church, Bethlehem Baptist Church, from COVID-19, COVID-19 effects, COVID-19 variances, that he deliver our city from COVID-19, COVID-19 effects, and COVID-19 variances, that he will heal our counties that make up the great state of Oklahoma from COVID-19, COVID-19 effects, and COVID-19 variances, that he would heal in Jesus' name, our country, we fast and pray from COVID-19, COVID-19 effects, and COVID-19 variances. And many things are being affected by COVID-19 uh, effects. And my wife tell me that uh, Walmart shelves are not, are not uh, stocked like they should be. There's car parts that we're waiting on to fix uh, our cars that are not available because of the labor shortage. There's many things that are going on, but we believe in the power. I believe in the God that I serve. That's why I fast and pray. That's why I implore you every week to fast and pray because God has the power that we have to be his people in Jesus' name. We're also asking um, you to fast and pray for our loyalty month. I like to call crescendo. Uh, this coming Wednesday, February 23rd through the 24th, uh, we're going to have uh, classes, Zoom classes, into which I want to take this opportunity to invite anyone listening at the sound of my voice to become involved with these Zoom classes and in the sanctuary as well. Two classes, Fervent, it's a book on prayer and living by the book is a very strategic book that helps you to get the most out of your Bible. And we want you to be a part of it, Bethlehem and saints of God at the sound of my voice. You may be listening on a podcast, join us in our Zoom uh, time next week, maybe listening on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram, or click the link on Twitter. We extend this personal invitation for you to join these classes online. You can get the information at the place that you're listening to me right now next week. We have a class on prayer, which is this side of me, fervent, the class on living by the book on this side of me, we want you to join us, Bethlehem and Saints of God. We're so excited about what God is doing, and I'm challenging you, encouraging you to join the class, and I'm also encouraging you and imploring you to fast and pray with us tomorrow about uh, the crescendo of loyalty month and praying for the instructors, uh, Deacon Bill Jones, uh, and Brother Maury Bozell, who will be in the Living by the Book class, Sister Jocelyn Rushing, and Sister Denise Stafford, uh, who's going to be teaching fervent, fasting and praying for them, and all of the body of Christ that will be impacted as a result of this. We need you to fast and pray. Continue to pray, fast and pray for those who are sick among us. Uh, those who've been through procedures, uh, those who are mourning, we're going to fast and pray for them as well. And we also continue to fast and pray for this young man who lost his life in Minneapolis, uh, really fasting and praying for the Locke family and justice that we believe that God has the power to give us as we seek his face. In Jesus' name, and as we believe, as we believed in 2020, and we believe now that Black lives do matter and that you just cannot get away with uh, a death in this manner. So we're fasting and praying. And I wrote the book, Black Lives Matters in the Bible. Um, and I use uh, seven stories about Black lives, Black folk who've lost their lives 
in the same context of scripture, which talks about the value of life. And that's why it's subtitled, All Lives Matter. So you can pick it up at my Amazon page. It's amazon.com backslash author backslash Reverend R-E-V, Dr. D-R, Michael Eton, E-A-T-O-N. You can get that book there as we fast and pray that Black lives will matter in 2022 in Jesus' name. So we're fasting and praying and believing that God can move universes like he did in the beginning when he stepped out of, of nothing and called it something and something began to exist. We call that ex nihilo, making something out of nothing. That same God is who we're praying to on this Friday. And I always challenge you to, to pray your burden. Pray your burden. You may have just gotten laid off. You may have just gotten a bad uh, report from the doctor. They told you that you have cancer and, and you're struggling for your life right now. We're fasting and praying. Fasting, praying for Brother Otis uh, also in his struggle to overcome cancer. Uh, fasting and praying and believing God has the power and that since we call on him as father and we are in covenant relationship with him, that he can be our once again food, Jehovah Jireh, and provide us with everything that we need in Jesus name. So I want to encourage you as always, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do this passionately. I'm trying to do this for you I talk about this every week, and I don't want this to be a religious experience for you. I want you to come in contact with a true and living, breathing God that you can see, touch, and smell, and hear. In Jesus' name, fast and pray, church. In Jesus' name. Um, I said fast and pray for your burden, and, and many of you know... My next book for this coming year, I've been asking you to fast and pray about it. It's a book entitled How to Overcome the Psalms of Loneliness, subtitled A Look at Loneliness in the Book of Psalms or Psalm. I keep putting that S on it like a pastor, or I keep calling him pastor, Professor Hendricks wrote about <laughs> And Sunday school teachers uh, do not like many times when you put that S on there. <laughs> so, but it's been such a bad struggle for me to leave that S off. But we all can learn in the book of Psalm, how to overcome uh, the Psalms. And it is an S in my title of book and, uh, and subtitle look at loneliness in the book of Psalm. So uh, fast and pray with me that for that's my burden. You may have a burden and, and, and I want you to fast and pray for your burden of purpose. We all have gifts, talents, and abilities that God wants us to use. And I want you to pray for your gifts of burdens uh, and, and, and allow God to move in your life to make you even more impactful to and for the body of Christ. So fast and pray for your burden of purpose in Jesus' name. Lastly, but not least, uh, you know I'm in a series and you know we're in Loyalty Month, Bethlehem, but those who are listening in may not know that we're in Loyalty Month here at Bethlehem Baptist Church. And it's a month that reinvigors our loyalty to God. Let me say that again. It's a month that reinvigors our loyalty to God and we challenge the people of God to become more loyal to God. And in this month of loyalty, I'm preaching a series entitled The Intimate Series, How to Become Intimate with God. And we've been standing on Acts chapter six, verse four, which you can see behind me, which says that we will give ourselves continuously to prayer and the ministry of the word. And I've been saying all month long, the great minister there out of 
Jacksonville, originally from Los Angeles. Ace B. Charles said about this text that uh, it's like a like two wings on the plane. One is prayer, and the other is the word of God. And he posed the rhetorical question: Which wing can you do without? You can't do without any. In Bethlehem, remember, we did a survey. We thought, what was it that? We need it as a church. The survey came out, prayer and Bible study. So this was in your heart and God has used this uh, and gave us a great uh, illustration of what he wants us to do as a church. If we have the wing of prayer, we have the wing of the study of the word of God, then we can take off and go places that we could never imagine as a church in Jesus' name. And I'm ready to go, Bethlehem, to places that we've never been before. But we've got to have this basis of prayer and the study of the word of God. And, and you know, I've, I've done uh, many messages you can see behind me, uh, the supplication, and scripture, uh, pericope, and that was talking about prayer in the word of God. If you hadn't listened to the saints' prayer, that's how Jesus taught us how to pray. Uh, the shield of the pericope. Um, also, uh, the spirit's prayer from last Sunday. If you, if you didn't listen to that, the spirit's prayer uh, from last Sunday, uh, we want you to listen to that from last Sunday and also yesterday Bethlehem I don't want you to miss because uh, many of us was in our church conference yesterday but after the church conference I sent out a link to this word that I hope and pray that you did not miss if you missed it Bethlehem it's in Wednesday's pastor's text it's the shine of the pericope the shine of the pericope, Psalms 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We know that, but I want you to listen to this word. Don't miss, stay connected. Don't miss and don't get left behind. You need to stay connected. So if you didn't get to listen to that because you were in the church council or conference meeting, you need to find a time today tomorrow before Sunday where you can listen to that word in its entirety in Jesus name. And it's leading us to uh, our uh, session next week after I preach on the prayer of solicitation or the solicitation of prayer from Philippians chapter four verses uh, six through seven. That's a very familiar text. And I'm going to give a, a uh, brief devotional word uh, tonight uh, or Sunday on that, but I'll give a brief uh, uh, devotional word uh, on the solicitation of prayer tonight. And I like to do that to get you prepared for Sunday. But it's all headed towards the the session presentations that will happen on Wednesday. I've already invited you to the Zoom session and encourage you to be there uh, on this coming Wednesday. We're so excited about that. And then the last message in that series is the salvation prayer, which be, will be the Sunday after that. So we want to challenge you, encourage you, Bethlehem, to stay connected. In Jesus' name, so we're so excited what God is doing. Uh, I'll share briefly this devotional thought on the solicitation of prayer. Again, it's from Philippians chapter 4, verses uh, 6 through 7. And it says this, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation. Let me say this again. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation. What do you do in every situation? By prayer and Petition with thanksgiving. Present your request to God. 
Then he says, this is what happened. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guide your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. As I was thinking about this and preparing for Sunday, I was thinking about uh, what was the most anxious time in my life where I was anxious and I would worry. And uh, I, I had to think back uh, to a time where God hadn't sealed this text upon my heart, mind, and soul. Um, but I can remember growing up, particularly as a teenager, I was so anxious because I came from uh, People look at me and think I came from uh, the Huxtable family, but I came from what I describe as the Adams family. Uh, during that time, we had a raging alcoholic and my stepdad and my sister was addicted to, um, back then it was crack and uh, my mother, who was a Christian, uh, worked at night, and uh, I, during the evenings, was left alone. I felt alone in uh, the household where uh, these two raging addicts uh, were loose. And one thing I used to always be worried about. I used to always worry that my mother wouldn't come home. I mean, I was very anxious, very, very anxious about my mother coming home because I felt that if my mother uh, was not in this situation, for me, there would be no hope. And, and, it, and it caused me some anxiety, really, that really uh, lasted until... Uh, my time as a young adult where God had to help me to come to terms with my anxiety because when I left home, I was still anxious. And I left home at a young age. The Lord uh, delivered me at 19 and had never went back uh, to that house ever again. I rarely visited that house. Uh, but even when I left, I noticed that anxiety had become a part of me. I was worried. I was anxious about everything. I started being anxious in my household at home. But then I left home. You know, you think you delivered, you know, at least you, from the people. But you didn't know that the people had an impact upon your life. And it manifests this ability to be anxious about everything. But then as I grew in Christ became a member of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship. God began to teach me this text. And I mean, I really had to come to terms with it because I, I was an anxious person, worried about almost everything. But God sent me to this text. Do not be anxious about anything. Hello, somebody. And, and maybe it was, it was so hard for me to think about a time when I was anxious because uh, I had began to live by the word, which says in every situation, by prayer and petition, prayer and petition, prayer and asking God, prayer and soliciting God, uh, um, with thanksgiving, present your request or your solicitation to God. So if you want to overcome anxiety in your life, you may not have to be able to take those pills that sometimes they say that helps you not to worry. Maybe you take the pill of God's word. We talked about yesterday, the word being a light unto our feet. And the feet is, you've shined the feet on your, your, the light on your feet first in the middle of the darkness to get orientated to see where you are. And then you shine the light upon the path that you're going. And right now, the light is shining upon the anxiety in your life. You are anxious, just like I was anxious. You were you, you worried. 
and, and I forgot the percentage about uh, the things that we worry about. I think they said, uh, and I hate to put a number on it when I don't really remember, but I think they said about 80% of what we are worry about never comes to fruition. Be anxious about, uh, don't be anxious about anything the Bible says. And instead of taking the pills, and I'm not telling you not to take your medication because if, if the doctor say I need it, normally I would take it. I'm not saying that. But that's between you and your doctor, you and your God. But what I am saying that if you're anxious, uh, the best way I believe to overcome anxiety, especially in a pandemic time, is that in every situation, the Bible says, what do you do in every situation? Since you're worrying about every situation, this is what you do about every situation. It says, by prayer. Hello, Father. Remember the saint's prayer? It's easy. Model. First, we tie into the Father of God, our Father. Then we tie into his fancy. Uh, what is it that you want in our lives today? What is your fancy? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And remember, we said that God is our food. You see, when you understand that he, you have a covenant relationship with God now, the creator of the universe, the, the God who spoke out of nothing into something and created something ex nihilo, something out of nothing, is the same God. Hello, somebody is saying to you today, and you have a covenant relationship with him, is saying to you today, do not be concerned. Don't worry about anything. But in every situation, what do you do? You pray. That's why we get to where God is the food for us. Give us this day our daily bread. And I, I believe it has more to do with just daily bread. It has to do with God being Jehovah Jireh. And he provides the food. He provides uh, all the finances. He provides. Uh, and remember, he's a father. And what the father does, and we tie it into him in the first of the saints prayer, what a father does is he protects a father all provides, a father guides, a father is a priest to us, uh, which gives us uh, all the wisdom that we need. Uh, he is everything. And then he becomes our food. Hello, somebody. So what we got to do today to make sure our prayers work, we have to forgive those uh, who have co committed sins against us. Forgive us our debtors. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And then God is our forerunner. You got to say, Lord, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all sin and evil. And for some, whoa, the temptation is to worry. The sin that so easily entangles us is to worry. And we've got to ask God to be our forerunner. And the way we do that is through prayers and petitions, prayers or solicitation. You've got to ask God, but while you're asking him, you got to remember that, hey, there's always something to be thankful about. That's what the text says, with thanksgiving. And thanksgiving is not just one day out of a year before God. Thanksgiving should be every day. And God says if you ask him, if, if you petition him, uh, and, and you're grateful for what you already have, then you present your request, listen, Solicitation from God. Present your request to God. You want to overcome anxiety in your life? Do this. And it says in verse 7, you got to stand on the word of God. Remember we said the word is a lamp, a light into my feet, and a light in, uh, and, uh, and a, uh, is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. And, and if you do this, stand on the word of God, this is what will happen. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Uh, Whoa, I had to think back. 
Oh, and I don't want to preach supposed to be a devotion tonight, but as I thought back, I had a hard time figuring out what was, when was I last anxious? Uh, when did I struggle with weary? What it was, a, but God had protected me so much in his word. He, he, he has, he's allowed my mind to give me the peace of God and he tra trans which transcends all understanding. This should be a time where I'm worried, but I'm not worried. Hello, somebody, in the pandemic time, I, you know, I've been concerned, but I'm not worried. I'm not anxious like I used to be when I was younger because God transcends all my understanding and he guards my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Bethlehem Saints of God, this was a devotional thought. It seemed kind of heavy, though, but it was a devotional thought. I want you to meet me or beat me in the sanctuary on Sunday. As a matter of fact, why don't you beat me there for Sunday school, either in Zoom at 10 o'clock or in the service at 11, and we're going to see in the Word, and we're going to learn more about the solicitation of prayer and this word on this coming Sunday, February uh, the 20th at 11 o'clock service. So I want you to beat me there, Bethlehem. And if you are listening at the sound of my voice and looking for a church home, you can come this Sunday at 11. God has a word for you. Heads up for the weekend. And heads up for the weekend, my last announcement is a. Uh, I want to remind uh, the instructors and the deans uh, that we're going to have a, a practice session. And we've been preparing for this time. Yeah, y'all, you, you have to become a part of this. We've been preparing. But we're going to have a practice session uh, this coming Saturday at 10 o'clock. I want you to remind you of that and uh, meet us there as we prepare for this wonderful time. The crescendo is what I'm calling it, of loyalty month as we study how to be fervent. That's prayer. You see, this text I dealt with tonight was prayer, and you and you got to pray fervently and living by the book. The book is the word of God. That's what we learned tonight. So uh, I want you to practice uh, this Saturday at 10 o'clock, instructors. And uh, so that's my last announcement for Heads Up for the weekend. And as always, Bethlehem, I'd like to tell you, stay connected. Stay connected. This has been our theme throughout the pandemic. Stay connected. Stay connected to God. Stay connected to God's precepts. And we're studying that this month, the importance of his precepts. And stay connected to God's people. As a matter of fact, stay connected to God's people is to pray. Remember, we, la we learned about that last time. We pray uh, for the saints, uh, the people of God. So we want you to stay connected, Bethlehem. And may God bless you and keep me, keep you is my prayer. Remember, for those who are looking for a church home, we're located 311 North Dunbar. Visit our website at www.heargodsword at Bethlehem.com, right here in the heart of Paul's Valley, Oklahoma. May God bless you once again and keep you is my prayer.